announced at the X01 event in Europe on October 16th, 2001 with a single screenshot. BC was being developed by Lionhead Studios' satellite studio, Intrepid Computer Entertainment, exclusively for the Xbox. The game was to be about survival, growing your tribe, and exploring the world around you. With a third-person viewpoint, the action would take you across huge areas of land, while hunting some larger-than-life dinosaurs in order to feed your tribe. And of course, there was plenty of blood to go around. Remnants of other tribes could be brought into your group, hopefully making it stronger. In this two-part series, P2P Online goes primal and explores the unseen world of BC on the original Xbox. We have three new supporters of P2P Online. During the other 12 supporters is Dimitri, Roger, and Benjamin. Every penny goes towards the preservation of games like this or for equipment that helps make preservation possible. Do check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash P2P Online. I also must mention Mr. Mario 2011 for sending me a new microphone. Check out his channel on YouTube if you get a chance. And hopefully this video sounds at least a little bit better, even though I'm still getting a handle on this microphone thing. Thanks a lot for your continued support. Characters in BC would grow, evolve, and change. Not only physically, but with their skills as well. Cavemen could level up as they perform tasks. But it also had a tendency to decorate their characters in tattoos and sometimes a mask that helps indicate their standing in the tribe. Cavemen each had different classes with different skills to go along with them. Some could hunt, some could gather, and still others could build structures that impact their tribe's abilities to survive. The player was expected to teach the tribe how to actually do this surviving thing. Trees could be cut down for wood, or their fruit harvested for food. The branches could be used for weapons, as you could craft spears, arrows, and more advanced weapons to better survive. Of course, you could also burn down all the trees. Spirit stones would allow your population to grow, perhaps with numbers greater than 30. The dinosaurs themselves would behave like you might expect. Some would be angrier than others, some nocturnal, and still others would leave you alone, unless provoked of course. On a smaller scale, rats can be seen running through the grass and shrubs, showing just how detailed the game could be. Perhaps a greater threat than the dinosaurs was a group called the simians, which were apes that would evolve and grow alongside you. Planet of the Apes, anyone? Each of the game's 20 creatures would need basically what every living creature needs. Food, shelter, and water. Keep any of these things away and the creatures will die. Of course, for the cavemen, you could just set even more things on fire, but that will just continue to damage the ecosystem. I don't recommend that. Five areas on one continent were planned, each with their own challenges. In the later stages of development, creatures could no longer be hunted to extinction, but player actions could still influence their behavior, including their migration habits. Now, despite all of this information about what the game was or what it could be, very little of it was actually shown to the general public. While the press was shown the game behind closed doors on a number of occasions, they were never really able to play it themselves either. The public only had a few screenshots over the years to go off of, along with some of the video which you've seen in the background which is that low quality early 2000s resolution with all that blocky video which we try to forget ever existed. And on top of that, all of that was recorded by someone at Intrepid. Essentially, the game has never been put in the hands of the general public at all. The game was ultimately cancelled in 2004 and has quickly risen to the top of many most wanted unreleased game lists, mine included. Years of digging on my part has yielded nothing significant. A few press images in higher quality here and a few nuggets of information there, but basically nothing. Until now. I have managed to recover a number of assets from BC. Based on the articles that are out there, and from examining the builds themselves, you're looking at plenty of never-before-seen content. Let's take a trip back in time to May 2002, where BC was shown at E3 behind closed doors. This marked the first time that any real screenshots were shared too, if we don't count that first shot that was obviously a bit much to say the least. Peter Molyneux himself demoed this exact version for outlets like IGN. 
IGN described seeing mice running through fields and even a pterodactyl swooping down towards the player. But none of this was immediately obvious when I first checked this version out. I could easily run around and look at some truly spectacular dinosaurs, but honestly nothing was happening. While I was walking around, every now and again I'd feel my vibration in the controller rumble, but it was fleeting and nothing happened. So I did what I normally do with all prototypes, I started to hit a lot of buttons. Up popped a debug menu, but more interesting than that was that there was some button that was triggering events when I was near one of those rumble strips. After over an hour of trial and error, and figuring out what each and every button does in every situation, I came to the conclusion that when the controller rumbles, the player should hit the black button. This triggers an event somewhere on the screen and truly makes the world feel alive. This sort of control demo isn't unusual, especially for a game that was so early in development. Bungie famously did it many, many times with the Halo series, as have many other game developers who needed something to show but didn't have all that much done yet. Remember, the press wasn't playing the game, but rather is being demoed by an employee. So to the casual onlooker, everything looked natural. Non-playable characters seem to go about their tasks by themselves, while dinosaurs charge at and around the player. But all of this is scripted. Still, even in May 2002, the game was already looking stunning, with flowing grass and water that not only reflected the dinosaurs, but seemed to flow around rocks. Keep in mind that this game is extremely early though, so if things look a little rough, particularly the animations, that's just to be expected. I have no way of knowing if I have successfully triggered every single event that was in the game. Nor do I know exactly how they demoed it to the public because we really only have a few small clips of the game. I've spent quite a lot of time running around the field looking for things to trigger that I may have missed, and thus far I've come up empty. For now, I'm going to be quiet and allow you to see the world of BC like it has never been seen before. Later on in the video, we jump forward in time a little bit, so do stick around.
XO2, Spain, September 2002. The press would have yet another opportunity to visit with Peter. Very few details would arise out of these articles, though, because they really didn't write a whole lot about the game itself. Still, the build for XO2 is less scripted and begins to resemble a bit of a game. Trees can be climbed, your tribe can be ordered around, dinosaurs can be attacked and harvested for food. There are even some Easter eggs, or should I say dinosaur eggs, hidden throughout this small world. Different from the valley in the previous demo, this build starts out on a beach and allows you to choose which of your tribe mates you want to actually follow you around and which should stay at home and train a little bit. Again, I'm going to be quiet and allow you to see a totally unseen look of BC.
I hope you've enjoyed this very, very special look at BC for the Xbox. This is one of the dream projects for me, and I cannot thank those of you out there who worked on the game enough. Do stick around for part two, which will be coming in the coming weeks or so. It has even more material that has never been seen before. Do hit that subscribe button and check us out on Patreon. But until next time, thanks for watching.